So we've all seen these kind of problems before. These are, you know, when I was growing up, we had a textbook and we would go through and be assigned, you know, 20, 30 problems, odds or evens, depending on where the answer key was in the back of your book. And we'd grind through our pieces of paper. We come back the next day, the teachers would share the answers, we copy them down the ones we got wrong, and then we go to the next lesson. This year is this from uh, the CPM textbook. It's online, it's homework help, so um, I don't actually have a textbook to show you specifically. But this gives you an idea of something that we could use to manipulate. And so this is a lesson for sixth grade using area and perimeter, and it's actually a lesson that my son is currently doing. And they get a ton of these kind of questions. Uh, good questions and good thinking, don't get me wrong. I'm not here to knock the system in, in that respect. But we can take something like this, a little tiny graphic with a lot of words that sometimes can be overwhelming to kids who struggle and bring things to life. And so as looking at something like this, where they want you to figure out the shaded tiles in a large square, we could easily manipulate this to the real world using Lego and then take it even a step further with Minecraft. And just doing some really subtle things like that can enhance the learning experience, bring more kids in. You know, it brings in more of the senses. We've got things that are tangible. We're clicking, we're moving, we're interacting. This right here, there's not much interaction. And we can still get these questions answered. So let's take a look at how we can do that and do it in a way that isn't going to take a lesson like this that maybe you have one class period, two class periods for and, and not extend it to say a two week project, but still keeping it within the perspective of what teachers are facing and trying to get a lot of information done in one calendar year. So let's look at these types of questions here. We're gonna focus the activity based on this. This is assuming the shaded tiles are large square foot at the right. Each one is one square foot. And let's try to figure out total area of shaded, unshaded, in different ways. Hey everyone, this is Coffee Chug. And what you're looking at is some basic, simple tools and toys that have been around for ages. We've got Lego, we've got Minecraft. And this is a flash drive that contains Minecraft education. And what I want to do and challenge you today with this episode is to show you how you can take an idea such as Common Core Math, as opposed to just grinding through a textbook, take a few Legos, a few moments in Minecraft, and enhance the learning experience to truly connect with students and help them understand concepts and the expectations that we all are facing in our classroom. In the end, by using Lego and Minecraft, I'm going to show you how to just a few quick steps without taking more time out of your day, because we all know time is of the essence, how you can use manipulatives and technology to enhance student learning. So let's take a look. All right, so something that's real simple. You don't need a whole lot of Lego pieces. What I have here is just a small container of just some random Lego pieces, um, just basic blocks. And you could use this in group work. So you could have, you know, a container. This is just in a, a pencil box for a group as a whole. If you had enough for everybody in your class, that would be even better. Um, and it doesn't really cost a whole lot. I mean, simple donations or just buying a regular set would get you what you want. So the first thing that we could do, if you remember back in the textbook, they talked about finding that area and it already provided the sides. So we could take something as small as this, and the first thing we could do is say, what's the area of our playing field or, you know, patio, whatever it is that you want to call it. Now kids can do a lot of things now. As a, with the squares, now they can they can touch, they can feel these bumps, which I know seems very small, but it's it's enough to keep kids connected. And so they could simply count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight by eight, we know we got 64 square feet here that we're working with. And so now you could tell them, pick out three pieces, pick out four pieces, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You could give them the set pattern if you wanted a little bit more control. And so I'm gonna say, take four pieces and design the square. And so now I could just simply add 
these pieces. Let me pick two other colors here. And now we can do that same kind of activity. But in this case, we could, as opposed to shaded and unshaded, we could say, all right, and I know that it's more 3D and, and area is, is flat, but this is where the imagination, you have to kind of just go with it here a little bit. You can say, now what's the area of the new blocks, the new new design pattern that you've put on there? And so now they'd have to go through and they could count and they could do a variety of different ways. If I know that this is a, a two by two, I could go four, eight, 12. There you go. And we've got that. They could also go this way, go 4 and 4 is 16, and then we're missing a 4, so they could subtract 12. You know, you can start to do things by color and percentages. There's a lot of different things you can do, but now it allows them to manipulate and build and create things on their own. It gives them a little bit of voice and choice. The other thing that you could do is say, okay, on your square, go ahead and create a design pattern that has a total of, say, I don't know, um, eight square feet, or let's go 16, so you get a little bit more. So 16 square feet. And that one's really easy, I know. But now they're gonna have to go and look at their pieces and start to do some math and start to figure things out and say, okay, uh, I can put these in, I can put these right here in the middle. Now I've got, there's 16 square feet. And you can take pictures of all the different designs that they come up with to show them that 16 square feet can look 10,000 different ways. You could go from here then, and if you had other kids involved, you could get bigger problems and say, okay, now you have to combine your squares, and now I want you to come up with 80 square feet, or whatever the challenge is, depending on the pieces that you have. And now kids have to work together in order to come up with these answers. The whole time they're manipulating, they're, they're hands-on, it's tactile, they're thinking, they're speaking, they're talking, they're being creative in their designs, and you've got it you've got something there that holds them. You could take it a step further. And if you have like Lego minifigs, and so here's like a cat and I've got like a spider, just little things. You could tell them to come up with their own story problem, you know? And if you're real savvy, if you have devices or things like that, they could create your own little stop motion, make their own little video, make, make a video problem. Sally here needs a new play area for her cat. Penelope. Penelope likes to have certain colors and she has to have three different play areas. Create an area that has three different color play areas and explain what they are. You have a total of whatever. You could add money or just space, whatever it might be. Now they'd have to go through and start to figure out, okay, what am I going to build? What's this going to look like? And so you could do a lot with just some simple, simple Lego pieces. That's hands-on, it doesn't take any more time. We've just done that, that problem, that question, and we can manipulate that through a variety of different scenarios. So there's a way, you're bringing in the senses, kids are excited, there's a nostalgia factor of Lego, and now we can take that and build the same idea and push it out into Minecraft. So let's take a look at that. All right, so now that we've used the Lego, um, and we've shown you a real simple way to use manipulative in the class to showcase, in this case, area and perimeter, we're now gonna use Minecraft Education. And what I have, who you can't see next to me, is my son, who ha happens to be in sixth grade. Um, Hello. He's gonna go ahead and jump into the world, and we're gonna show you how simple and easy it can be with Minecraft Education, so. Um, and I'm going to have you go ahead and why don't you recreate that space right there while I kind of talk a little bit. So one of the simple things that you can do is, in this case, we have a flat world. Nothing there to be distracted. Um, you know, as an educator, I think sometimes a lot of us are overwhelmed and scared by not knowing enough with, with Minecraft or these games. The beauty of it is the kids can figure it out rather quickly. Um, he's far more of an expert than, than I ever will be. So one of the things you can do, much like the Lego base plate is, you could have kids create, you know, whatever you want to call it. If we take a look at a lot of the story problems used in math, it comes area and perimeter, a lot of it deals with, you know, building a deck or a patio. Um, so that's basically what he's creating here right now. And he's just filling it in with some blocks. And so uh, what dimensions are you using right now, Aiden? Uh, 12 by 12, and inside area is a 10 by 10. 
Okay, so as he goes and fills this in, uh, what you're doing is you're watching it real time here. So you can see that it wouldn't take a long time. As a teacher, I could already have these created when I have kids come and, and enter the world. I could have stations set up throughout the world, and I can use blocks where they can't actually um, ruin them. And that, we can show you that here in, in a later episode if you're interested. But in this case, he's making it. Um, so one of the choices you could do is actually have kids build their own little area if you wanted to do. So he's actually going to leave that space wide open after this filling here. I'll go ahead and stop. Oh, I'm getting filled in, I guess now. And, and what we could do, if you think back to that original story problem that was in that I showed, which is a pretty typical one, is I could say, okay, uh, as a challenge, I want you to go ahead and add a, um, let's go four total area of a shaded area of another color in this area that's uh, four square feet. So he's going to go through and just pick another color. And why don't you kind of explain what you're doing here real quick. Okay, so you said four area. So like you take out four blocks and replace them with a different color. Good. And what he could do if he wanted to um, is he could add a sign. Okay. And what he could do then, if, if we wanted to, this is just one of many options, and he could put a little sign right there that shows that his knowledge is that that is how many square feet in. Four square feet. And he could have had that, had that right there. Boom. There it is. Real simple. So like I said, you could have station of the teacher or the kids could do it. The next thing, if you want to have an extension, then he could go ahead and create what's called pixel art. This is still in a 2D world, so to speak. And so um, he's actually an expert at pixel art. He has his own YouTube channel. What's your YouTube channel? Oh, oh he doesn't want to share. Oh, all right. He's, he's pretty uh, – doesn't want to, want to share the information. So what you could challenge kids to do is to, in Minecraft, build pixel art. And you can let them create whatever, obviously school appropriate. In this case, he's working on a design, which see if we can figure it out here in just a little bit. But then what you'd be able to do is then ask them the questions. What's the total area of the pixel art? And then, you know, what's the total area if you have more than one color? Uh, the total area, of, in this case, is going to be red. And I don't know if I have another color in here. We'll let them fill it out first. But now you've got some student voice, and you're building in differentiation automatically, as opposed to, I think, so many times teachers think they have to have three or four different levels of differentiation to make it work. Here, the kids can create their designs as complex as they want. And obviously, the more complex it's going to be, the more math and, and knowledge you're going to have to kind of figure out and, and develop. And so it kind of looks like it's the uh, emergence of, looks like an apple maybe. Mm -hmm. How would I ever have figured that out? So as he goes and fills this in here, what you could then do is have them share the case of this apple, you know, the total square or the total area of the apple, and then break that down by how many square feet is, are red, how many is brown and green. And you can kind of go through different scenarios this way. Uh, the last thing, if you wanted to push, and so area and perimeter, we could then start to get into looking at volume. And so he's going to go ahead now and just create this up in the air, a real simple rectangle. As a teacher, I would already have maybe some of these already created. And he's just going to build these out. And what you could have kids do once you get to volume, because that's the next logical progression, um, once you get into area and perimeter, why don't you just add one more layer on top so it's an actual rectangle. You could have these shapes already built out, and you could talk you know, area and perimeter. But now with volume, you could start to say, what's the volume of this rectangle? What's the square footage? And then the challenge could be, what do you need in order to cover it with glass? And so they'd have to do the math ahead of time, or they could go through and, and add the glass blocks all around it and have to do those configurations. Um, so it, it makes it a little bit more thought provoking for them. So they figure out the one, and could they calculate it ahead of time? And then build it out and see if they would be indeed correct. If you had to cover the whole thing in glass blocks, 
could they actually calculate that ahead of time? And now they have to go through and kind of figure this out and do some math, calculate all that, and, and make it work. So that would be the next logical extension using Minecraft. And so as he kind of covers this up here, what you're seeing is it's not overly complicated. We're not using a ton of different blocks, complex. As a teacher, I don't have to have a whole lot built out, but it allows kids to engage. If I were to have 30 students working in this world, we'd have a lot of awesome pixel art. We'd have a lot of things going. I would have stations built already, but you can see that you can get it built. You know, you're watching it real time here. It doesn't take a whole lot of time. That's the beauty of it. The last thing here is he fills this out. What we could also do is Minecraft Education allows for a portfolio. So he could go, what he's done here, he could go back to his Apple and take a picture of his work. So he's got the camera enabled. He took a picture and then he could jump to his portfolio. And what he can do in the caption then is he can you know just quickly explain what he's done. So you know, and he could go through it if he wanted to, we're not going to, we didn't calculate it. He could add in here his answers of how much square feet the apple was, things of that nature. And as a teacher, I can go in and check this work. And so it's just one more nice feature that, that's layered into Minecraft education. So probably the most important thing is not just me and my insights, but hearing from a student. So I'm going to put him on the spot here a little bit. He wasn't prepared for me to ask him a question. But Aiden, as a student, would this be something that would help, do you think, kids learn area and perimeter more? Or do you think, what do you, what do you think? I think it would probably be more helpful than the red textbook that we use. Because those are just kind of, in my opinion, boring. But this would probably be more enthusiastic, as I would say. But... I prefer this more than the book itself. So why would this be um, more of an improvement than a book? Because we, I mean, we got to have a, a baseline with textbooks, but then how does this help the learning process if, if, from a student's perspective? So our video got cut off, but what he went on to say, he talked about how it's hands-on. He didn't use the word tactile, but it gives him his own freedom of expression to share how he wants to learn. Um, he likes to be able to manipulate objects um, in the Minecraft world. Um, so hopefully that gave you some ideas. I know there's a ton more. So if you've got new ways in which you use Minecraft in the classroom or Lego, leave a comment. Give me thoughts, feedback, suggestions. I mean, we're all in this together. We're all trying to learn. This is as we're trying to push into that next boundary. You know, in terms of the real world that the teachers and students face outside of the theory land in which there's so many books and research talked about. But when you mix all the variables together, what actually truly works? And I do believe using something as simple as Lego pieces and something um, that can be as simple as Minecraft are two options to push learning to new levels without taking a whole lot of extra time. And kids are going to be able to showcase how they think, how they operate. And I think it's, it, it's a win-win for everyone. Look forward to your thoughts and feedbacks, and until the next time, take care.